is an egg. Eggs do not like to be dropped. Oh, fortunately, we can use the power of science to design something that'll keep the egg safe as it falls. Behold, my egg drop contraptions. The thing I really like about this experiment is there's no wrong way to do this. You can come up with any design you want and see if it works. This one here is a bunch of helium balloons. This structure is just to keep the helium balloons on so the egg can touch down very gently. Here it goes. Whoa. <laughs> and, and the egg is unharmed, miraculously sound. That one worked really well. Success. This is a giant helium balloon that I think will work pretty much the same way because I think this balloon will drop just slowly enough that the egg can actually just touch and nothing will happen. Um, so that didn't work. <laughs> and then there's this one, which has no slowing at all. It's all designed to just absorb the impact. And the idea is that the cone will crumple and absorb the force when it hits the bottom. Oh, no! Oh, no. I think it would have worked if it hadn't turned in the air, but it did, and... Well, I guess the egg is completely broken. So I'd call that one a fail. This one is the parachute. You see the egg has been nestled into this foam container. And this is a parachute that will hopefully slow the egg down. Woo! Uh-oh. Whoa. Over, over, good. And ah, <laughs> that one seemed to work well. Yep, the egg is totally fine. <laughs> the parachute worked. All right, egg drop experiment, totally fun experiment to do. But the question is, how do we max it out? And the answer is pumpkin drop. <laughs> Same thing, except with a pumpkin instead of an egg. Come on. OK. <laughs> all right, pumpkin drop with everything attached all at once. OK, here we go. Ready? One, two. Three. So what we've learned from this is the heavier something is, the more force is acting on it from gravity, which means the harder it is to slow down when it's falling. OK, fair enough. You win this one, gravity. But I'll beat you next time. I'm, I'm going to get a broom. Greetings, Science Maximites. My name is Phil, and welcome to Science Max Experiments at Large. At this very moment, half the lab is being held together with the power of electromagnets. A magnet one turning off. <laughs> electromagnets are a really cool and powerful way to interact with the world. And when I say power, that's because you need power to make them work or not work. <laughs> Magnetism is an invisible force that has to do with the magnetic fields created by magnets that lets them attract things that are metal or each other. But electromagnetism is a little different. You see, magnets are magnets all the time. It's because of what they're made out of. Electromagnets are only a magnet when you have an electric current going through them, which means you can turn them on or off. Today, we're going to be building an electromagnet. Oh, that was, that was the wrong switch. Anyway, like I was saying, today we're going to be building an electromagnet. You need a bunch of copper wire, a very large nail, or something metal to become your electromagnet, electrical tape, a battery, an on-off switch, wire strippers or a craft knife, and the help of an adult, and finally, something to magnetize, like these paper clips. And remember, all of the steps for this experiment are on the website. To begin, take the copper wire and start at the top of the nail. Leave a little bit of wire sticking out, then carefully start to wrap the wire around the nail. Don't go all the way to the end because you need some metal to turn into the magnet. Instead, when you want to start again, run the wire straight back to the top and start wrapping again in the same direction. And keep wrapping 
and wrapping until you get to this. Now I've used some electrical tape here, here, and here to hold it all together. Using your wire strippers or a craft knife and the help of an adult, remove the plastic coating from the ends of the wires. Attach these wires to the wires from the on-off switch with electrical tape, or attach them directly to a battery if you don't have an on-off switch. And ta-da, you have an electromagnet with your on-off switch. All you need to do is take the things you're going to magnetize, turn your electromagnet on, and suddenly it becomes a magnet. Pretty amazing. <laughs> and then you can magnetize to your heart's content. But when you're done, don't forget, you want to turn it off. Here's a fun chain reaction you can do with popsicle sticks or craft sticks, because these ones are a little bit wider than popsicle sticks. It is because these kind of sticks are slightly bendy, and when you bend them and put them together in a pattern in a certain way, you can keep them under tension, and then they want to snap back, and then they'll fly. So here's how you make the pattern. Ready? You take a popsicle stick or a craft stick, and you put it down on the table. I know, okay, it's a slow start. And we take another one and put it across. Now comes the secret. The secret is over and then under. You wanna put it over one and then under another, like that. And then this one over, under. Put it over the one that looks like it's the top stick and under the stick that looks like it's the bottom stick. And then it starts to hold tension. It starts to hold the potential energy. Continue this pattern. Each stick goes over and under the two sticks at the end. Now here's the trick. Soon as this one lets go, then that one will let go, then that one, then that one, then that one, and that's how you get the chain reaction. They all start flying up. So you have to build it with never letting go of that last stick. You have gotta always remember to keep a hand on it or else you'll have to start again. So, okay, so you ready? You wanna see me let it go? Here we go. I know, that isn't so great because it's better if it's a longer chain. So fortunately, I have a longer chain. I've got a binder clip on this end keeping the craft sticks together. Ready? Three, two, one. Wow! Release of kinetic energy from the potential energy of winding all the craft sticks together. Fun, and you can totally do it at home. Now, let's max it out. Behold, almost 800 craft sticks in a long, nicely designed triangle. Ready? Two, one. I'm gonna go get something to clean this all up with. Whoa. So I've joined Chris from Logix Academy and we are maxing out our stomp rocket. To do that, we're gonna use... Larger pipe, more airflow, bigger launch. The theory is that moving a larger volume of air through wider pipes will make our rocket work even better. So we get to work. This version is built exactly the same. We cut and attach the pipes, so a long piece, an elbow, like and a short piece, like then secure them all down. We attach the plastic water bottle and tape it so it's airtight, and then the only thing to do is make a new rocket that fits over the larger pipe. Ready to try it? I'm ready to try it. All right, let's do it. Let's go. One, two, three, go! <laughs> In the end, though it worked, it wasn't much better than the smaller rocket. I think we could still do better, right? Oh, yeah. This is science max, not science medium. Right, okay, let's go back to science max headquarters. Mini max! Vacuum sealing. That's what you call it when you take all of the air out of something, often a bag, to seal in the freshness of food. I will demonstrate using this Science Max banana. 100% banana, but with added science. Not all bananas contain science. Here's how you can do it at home. 
put your food in a bag, seal it most of the way, because we have to take out the air from the bag. And we will do that with a straw. Put a straw inside the bag, and then suck the air out of the bag, and then seal it at the very last second. There, a vacuum sealed banana. Now I know it's kind of hard to see that it's been vacuum sealed because bananas don't really crush much when you take the air out. So I like to use stuff that has a lot of air in it to begin with. In fact, there are special bags that are specifically for vacuum sealing that are supposed to store big and bulky items that have a lot of air in them like this pillow. See this nozzle right here? It's designed to be used with a vacuum. Haha. <laughs> So, what you do is you put the vacuum on this nozzle, open it up, and then you turn the vacuum on. Oh. The vacuum is sucking all the air out of the bag, just like we did with the banana. But because the pillow is full of air as well, it starts to shrink and shrink. Then you pull off the vacuum and you tie the seal off and... All right. And, ta-da! A vacuum sealed pillow. Okay, let's max it out. What could possibly be more maxed out than a vacuum sealed pillow? Vacuum sealed fill! Okay, I put plastic bags against the door and then sealed the edges with duct tape. And of course, I didn't put any plastic over my head because you never put your head in a plastic bag, right? Well, let's see if vacuum sealed fill it works. <sighs> Whoa. Hey, it's working! <laughs> the vacuum sucks all the air from the bag, which seals the bag and me in it to the wall. That means... I should be able to knock this milk crate out from under me. Air pressure, or the lack of air pressure, is keeping me sealed to the door. I'm completely suspended! <laughs> Uh-oh. I shouldn't have done that. 